The boogeyman has come to the stage. We got Kyrie Irving, Irving, Irving uh, coming up for his post game interview for the game three. That boy rocked the house again. No matter what they do, they couldn't do nothing with him. Let's get it. My language. Kyrie, we talked to Luca earlier about uh, your performance in the fourth quarter. He said you were born for these moments, called you Mr. Fourth Quarter. <laughs> so for one, I guess what does it mean to hear your teammate talk about you like that? And in the, in the fourth quarter, is it just something as simple as does a does a switch flip off to you? Like why are you so comfortable in these moments? I appreciate his words. <laughs> Luca's funny, man. Uh, I feel like we're both born for this if you if you ask me, but um yeah, it's just basketball, man. It's uh you know, you gotta give the game what it needs at times and uh, I felt like in that fourth quarter, we uh, had a good run going and those guys were, uh, you know, pressuring the basketball up the floor. So when we got into the paint, I felt like we just had to convert, get a few stops. We were playing um, back and forth game for a little bit with them. Um, but I had confidence in our guys when uh, we got stops in that fourth quarter and we got on transition. We just had to continue to push and get some easy ones. And then um, down the stretch, that's that's where we make our money, man. Um, you know, since all star break, we've. Uh, been up there with some of the top teams in the league. Uh, we're finishing clutch games. We have a great clutch record. Uh, so I, I think we have that poise now. And, um, you know, we're showcasing just our skill sets out there that uh, a lot of teams have to guard. The depth that we have, a lot of teams have to guard um, each one of us. And you got to pick your poison. So in the fourth quarter, when I'm being aggressive, I know it opens opportunities not only for myself but for my teammates. But they're no, they not picking their poisons, though. they letting the poisons go everywhere. Everybody just drinking all the poisons. Kyrie getting what he want. Luca getting what he want. The other guys on the floor getting what they want. You got to take – either you're going to let Kyrie cook or you're going to let Luca cook. And then you're going to let shut everything else down. Or you're going to let them two only cook and then you're going to shut the other three guys on the court down. You can't let everybody get everything. You just can't. You can't let that happen. Kyrie, you're known for being a historian of the game right here. Um, Thank you. Just with I'm one of few. <laughs> I'm one of the few that are actually a historian of the game in my age. Yeah, go ahead. With with teams being 154 and 0 undefeated when they go up 3-0, just what's the significance of that stat, and how does that feel just being 3-0 in this position right now? It means absolutely nothing right now. Uh, you know, that's not even something I'm thinking about. Um, you know, going into Game Four is still 0-0, um, and that's the type of motivation and mentality we have in that locker room. It's not just me. Uh, we feel like the job isn't finished and. We're going against one of the greatest teams in the world. You know, they still have the capability of, of beating us on any given night, and we have to treat them like that. So, mm. you know, it's a time to celebrate after the game, but once I get up here, it's on to the next thing and thinking about my recovery work, putting my kids to bed, watching film, and uh, just getting ready for this war, man, uh, warlike uh, battle that's going to come uh, next game. You know, so got to appreciate where we are, but at the same time, don't take it for granted and don't take the other team for granted because they're pretty sure they're going to watch this interview. They're going to study all our habits and see if we, uh, you know, lay down a little bit and get comfortable. I don't want to get comfortable at all. I want to push forward even more so and have our best game, game four, um, and live with the results after that. Katie, in the fourth quarter, you don't, don't show any emotion. You stay focused on it all the time. And how do you manage to stay in the song for so long? Yeah. No, thanks for thanks for talking. <laughs> thanks for speaking. I know you're giving your best. Um, yeah, no, the fourth quarter is, uh, you know, it's just you get to, a chance to see your competitors' emotions. You get to see what they're made of. Uh, you get to see the plays that they run in the clutch. And uh, it's just a chess match. So uh, I think that's the, that's the approach I take uh, throughout most of the game, but especially in the fourth quarter. Uh, when the game is in the balance, they're taking the lead, we're taking the lead. There's a few foul calls that are called that slows the game down. Um, but you just got to pay attention to all the little things. And, uh, you know, I feel like you put yourself in a, a great position. And uh, also when we come into our huddles, whether we're on the floor or whether in timeouts, we are constantly communicating and we're constantly giving each other that reassurance and confidence that, you know, we're a good team too and we got to finish the job. Kai, you mentioned Luke is also born for those clutch situations. What... what do you see that makes him uniquely suited to be a closer, uh, you know, especially at this stage? Uh, I mean, I think he's shown it over and over. Um, whether he's made him or missed him, he's taken him, and that's the confidence you need uh, to have, uh, especially in that clutch in those clutch situations. You got to have that confidence, and you can't be thinking about anything else other than your mechanics and your fundamentals and 
um, you know, putting us up ahead uh, to give us that separation, to give us that peace of mind. Uh, so, you know, when he's getting it going and he's making threes or he's driving to the basket and he's getting to the free throw line, it creates opportunities for all of us. And uh, when he gets it out in transition, he starts going and we see Luca get up down and get into his Luca sprint. And that makes a big deal for us and uh, it makes a big difference for us. And uh, makes my job a lot easier, especially when I'm coming to transition and those guys are a little tired. So, um, again, we don't play your turn, my turn, but when we get those opportunities to push in transition or get Luca ISO on the wing or at the top of the key, it's, t it's our time to take advantage of it. Mm. Kyrie, over here. Um, Y'all have gone up against, you know, two of the top three seeds in this playoffs. Um, you guys look like you're the favorite, though, like the way you're playing, just so much confidence. What goes into that mentality? What, what exactly are you... Just a confident mentality despite being an underdog in a lot of the series that you've played? Uh, I mean, if, if you look at our, our regular season, I don't think it tells the whole truth of who we are, you know, and, or who we were. I felt like, um, you know, the second half of the season, everybody got to you know, kind of see what we were made of. Uh, you know, but if you look at the beginning of the season, I mean, we were on pace for having a great season still. Um, you know, I think we would have finished one through three. That's playing hypotheticals, you know, if I don't get injured. Um, or if Luke is not laboring a little bit, or if we don't go through kind of those big transitions uh, that we had in the season where we had lineup changes. Um, you know, so I, I take all that into account when I look at who we are now. Uh, we've grown over the past few months. Uh, this has been a journey for us. And, um, you know, I like to think that, you know, being in fifth uh, took some pressure off of us uh, coming into this postseason. You know, everybody was looking at the top three seeds. So I felt like we, we snuck in there a little bit and surprised a few teams. But uh, the guys in the locker room all have always had that utmost confidence in one another. And uh, when we started getting into some tough games and we were able to uh, battle it out and come out with some wins, I think that uh, really sparked a, a new confidence for us. You know, guys making tough shots towards the end. I mean, I, I think you guys remember that Cleveland game, right? We, uh, <laughs> you know, now it's in Cleveland history. It had to be against me, but I, I look at my teammates and I'm telling them, I'm like, I was so pissed we lost there. And, um, but I want them to remember that, you know, what that felt like where we took our, our foot off the gas pedal a little bit and then Max Cruz hits a 59 footer, you know, breaks our heart and we go and lose in Indiana. So some of those moments I think that could have broken our team really made us who we are. And I'm grateful for these guys just continuing to battle and our coaching staff getting us prepared and upper management doing a great job just feeding us confidence. So it's a full team effort. Hi, Ree. Um, hi. You've been in the game quite a while. You've been around great players, uh, great teams. And just at this point in your career, yeah. are you, your kids? Yeah, yeah go ahead. I'm, are they good? Yeah, they're good. Okay. Uh, at this point in your career and just honestly in your life, what do the Dallas Mavericks mean to you from the coaching staff to the guys that you get to call teammates? Uh, I feel like it's a, a great chapter that's being written right now. Um, you know, I'm enjoying every step of the way. I'm not taking anything for granted. I'm enjoying the hot weather right now. I'm enjoying the Dallas community and the fans here. And um, You know, we talked about this early in the season, just how much I felt embraced. Uh, but I think it's going a little deeper than that. It's, it's really helped me grow as a human being and find my peace out here. It's good to breathe fresh air, get outside. <laughs> you know, it's, seasonal depression is real when you're growing up in up north. I spent 12 years in the Eastern Conference you know, in three cold cities that deal with four seasons. So you come out here and you're able to get outside and ground yourself a little bit more and spend some time with your family, watch your kids run outside and wife's happy. You know, you know what they say about a happy wife? Happy life, you know? So I, I don't take those things for granted. Um, you know, it, it comes with it and we're laughing about it. But on a serious note, uh, I've just been able to grow and uh, understand that uh, all these things don't um, happen without a lot of the work that goes unseen you know, just doing the inner work, doing the spiritual work and enjoying the game and putting that in perspective as well. You know, feels good. Kyrie, over here to your right. Hey, thank you for your time this evening. We've talked to you about the, being a leader on this team, right? A multitude of times, so it's not a new conversation. I love it, I love it. <laughs> well, how do you navigate the complexities of being a leader? Because we know it doesn't always look the same way every day. How do you navigate knowing when to push, when to pull and everything in between? I mean, that, I mean, we throw around that word leader and leadership so often, especially in this uh, industry. Uh, you know, I, I genuinely feel like, uh, you know, leaders are chosen sometimes, but uh, leaders emerge out of the group, too. And, um, you know, when you get that uh, role or people start calling you a great leader or start asking you about leadership, you got to understand that 
when you're in that position, failure is going to be part of it. Um, making mistakes is going to be part of it. And, um, you know, almost like embarrassment is part of it, too, because sometimes you're going to get it right. And sometimes you're going to get it completely wrong. So uh, I think I've come to a, a place in my life where I've just accepted it. You know, this is what comes with it. Um, you know, the the thing that I always think about uh, when I am leading the guys with some of the other leaders on the team is just uh, protecting them and uh, allowing them to fail, too, and uh, feel what pain feels like, too. You know, so I think all these words that we're throwing out are just words. But when you're in the middle of it um, and you got to figure it out and you don't have it all figured out, that's when you're that's when you're made, you know, right there. So. It feels good that I have uh, the support system, though. I'm not doing this alone. It's never a lonely job. I used to think leadership was just about me, 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 and taking on the, the brunt of all the responsibility. No, that's not even close to it. You know, you got good people around, good family, good friends, and they love you un unconditionally. Anything's possible in this world. So, hey, man, you, you got to you gotta imagine that Kyrie is pe got to be peeking ahead just a little bit at the Celtics to get some of that payback, you know, people... People trash that man on the way out of there, you know what I'm saying? And it could have been rightfully so, you know, but you know he got to be peeking ahead just a little bit to the Celtics, man. Go ahead and finish this game four, put these boys away, and uh, go ahead and get that revenge. I think we may see Kyrie's best game. If he, get, if he played the Celtics in the finals, we're going to see the best Kyrie Irving we ever seen. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments below.